You're watching Eye on Africa, I'm James Creedon. These are our top stories this evening from across the continent. The death toll rises to 33 in Uganda after a tragic boat accident this past weekend on Lake Victoria. We'll bring you the latest on that. And Kenya's president, Sir Kenyatta, opens a three-day international conference in Nairobi on the future welfare of oceans, lakes and rivers. He said humanity's lasting prosperity D d d prosperity rather depends on their protection. And Accra was alive with music this weekend as artists from across the continent came to Ghana for the fifth edition of the All African Music Awards. Hello and thanks for watching. Now we start this bulletin in Uganda where the death toll has risen to 33 after a boat accident on Lake Victoria over the weekend. Now the latest accident comes after 200 people perished on the same lake last September when an overloaded ferry sank. Nicolas Germain has the story. The boat had been carrying mostly young revelers. Cruises on Lake Victoria are an increasingly popular weekend activity for young people in Uganda's capital, Kampala. According to the authorities, the boat had a capacity of 50, but was transporting many more passengers. We are searching for the dead. And uh, based on the information from the witnesses, they said there were about 100 and 20 people. That's based on the witnesses. Some witnesses said the captain warned the passengers the boat was tilting to one side, but because of the loud music and heavy drinking, many revelers did not hear him. Some rescuers showed great bravery. We also have a friend who saved nine lives. When he went to save more, they all held on to him, and he drowned as well. Just two months ago, another overloaded ferry sank on Lake Victoria, but on the Tanzanian side, more than 200 people lost their lives in the tragic accident. The number of fatalities is often high due to a shortage of life jackets and the fact many local people cannot swim. One of the worst catastrophes occurred in 1996, when a ship capsized on Lake Victoria off the Tanzanian town of Mwanza, and more than 800 people were killed. Now, a day of tragedy in Somalia on Monday after two explosions killed scores of people. Seven civilians were killed and five more wounded in the capital Mogadishu, Mogadishu after a car bomb detonated at a major market in the south of the city. The explosion occurred as security forces stopped a suspicious vehicle in order to question the driver. Now, no one has claimed responsibility for that particular explosion, but a second explosion in the centre of Somalia that killed 15 people has been claimed by al-Qaeda-affiliated al-Shabaab. That group is fighting to overthrow the internationally backed government and carries out regular bombings and armed assaults on military and civilian targets. To Cameroon next, where tensions have been building over the past week in English-speaking regions of the mostly francophone country, uh, with a spike in priests being abducted, as well as the alleged burning to death of scores of people in the northwest region, Cameroon's Human Rights Commission now says the Anglophone crisis is a civil war. Meanwhile, the Kenyan government has called for investigations into the killing of a Kenyan priest last week in one of the Anglophone regions in Cameroon. Indira Ayuk has more. While Roman Catholic Christians were still to come to terms with the assassination of a Kenyan priest in Kimbong in the southwest region of Cameroon at the close of last week, three other missionaries alongside their drivers were abducted in Munyenge in the southwest region of Cameroon. Their captors are still to make demands or to release them. The incinerated corpses of people in Bali in the northwest region of Cameroon has left everybody shocked. The military spokesman has dismissed the allegations as fake, even with the picture circulating on social media. Meantime, pro-separatist fighters are pointing accusing fingers at the Cameroon military. It should be noted that the convener of the All Anglophone Congress, which has been uh, postponed several times, Cardinal Tumi, has called on pro-separatist fighters to drop their arms and to embrace peace. The government of Cameroon is yet to take concrete measures to solve the ongoing Anglophone crisis, which has so far left thousands of people homeless and several others dead. Meantime, the country's uh, National Human Rights Commission has described the Anglophone crisis as a civil war. Now to Kenya next, where a three-day international conference focusing on better management of the world's oceans, lakes and rivers started on Monday in Nairobi. The Sustainable Blue Economy Conference is co-hosted by Kenya, Japan and Canada 
Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta issued a warning at the event's opening, saying that these parts of the natural environment must be protected to ensure lasting prosperity. Let's take a listen. We have convened here today to commit to innovate and use transformative ways for using us in a sustainable, in a, in a sustainable manner our oceans, seas, lakes and rivers. And we know unless our environmental riches are protected, there can be no lasting prosperity for any of us. Next to Central African Republic, where forest rangers at Bamingi Bangoran National Park are fearing for their safety. Rangers are tasked with protecting the region's dwindling wildlife, yet they often end up distracted by having to protect themselves. Also, rebel groups are present in the sprawling park complex and they are often far better armed than the park rangers. This report by our colleagues at Agence France Presse. In rebel territory in the north of Central African Republic, these men are preparing for battle. They're not militiamen, but forest rangers financed by the European Union. Their mission? To find a lost baby giraffe threatened by poachers. She had parents, but her parents were all killed by poachers. And it's not strangers who do this, it's the local poachers. To find the baby giraffe's tracks, Simplice and his men must drive cars, motorcycles, swim across rivers, and construct makeshift rafts far from human civilization. The wildlife here has been decimated by years of poaching. In 40 years, we've gone from about two or 3,000 giraffes to maybe less than 10 today. Their missions are dangerous. This small brigade of 46 men often comes face to face with poachers who do not hesitate to shoot at them. This was a bullet that hit me during a confrontation with the Sudanese. It struck me from behind. Poachers, locals or Sudanese come to the park to hunt for food. To fight them off, the rangers are trained in tactical movement and sharpshooting, but it's a difficult task. In a region with no courts or prisons, poachers arrested by authorities are systematically released after two days in police custody. Now, images of Mohammed bin Salman brandishing an electric saw have been erected in Tunis. This to protest a visit by the Saudi Crown Prince on Wednesday. A Tunisian journalists' union as well as civil society groups have promised to take to the streets to show their opposition. Some have dubbed the visit a desecration of the spirit of the Tunisian revolution. Bin Salman is currently on a tour of Arab states, his first trip since the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. To Egypt next and a journey back in time. Now the treasures of a tomb dating 3,500 years back were revealed. France's University of Strasbourg is participating in the archaeological mission in the Assassif Valley near the city of Luxor. Let's take a look at what they uncovered. Colours undimmed by time. A French and Egyptian team have discovered a new tomb in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. The paintings depict the owner and his family. Buried in the chamber are more than 1,000 figurine servants to serve the dead in the afterlife. The stars of the show are the stunningly preserved sarcophagi. We know that it's a woman and that she was probably called Uyo or Aya. Both this woman and the owner of the second sarcophagus were nobles. And then we found the side chamber. It was sealed with mud bricks. So we did open it. We found almost two intact wooden coffins in perfect condition of preservation with flowers in the top of them. One sarcophagus has been dated back to the 18th dynasty, which was 1,500 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. It's the period that includes some of Egypt's most well-known pharaohs, including Tutankhamun and Ramesses II. The choice to open up the tomb under the eyes of international media was strategic. The government is trying to improve the country's image following the 2011 revolution. It hopes these exciting new finds will bring back tourists.
Now, music lovers and music stars from across Africa converged on Accra this uh, weekend uh, for the fifth All Africa Music Awards, dubbed AFRIMA, the annual event celebrates African musicians who have distinguished themselves over the previous 12 months. And it was no surprise that Nigeria's Davido took away the Artist of the Year gong. He has produced a string of recent hits in the past year alone. Let's take a listen to some of the nominees at this year's awards, starting with Algeria's Lina Mayem. I think it's really going to help me export my music across Africa. We get to meet lots of people for potential collaborations with artists from Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and many others. It's really an event that helps us meet people. It's great because we get to reunite all African countries and we all speak the same language. Music is our language. There's no borders, no politics involved. It's all good vibes. Music being spoken in Ghana on Saturday evening. Thanks for watching Eye on Africa. Do stay tuned to France 24. Maiden Square in Kiev, Ukraine. The government has just authorized the police to open fire on pro-European protesters. The carnage leaves 80 people dead and hundreds wounded. That was five years ago. Today, our France 24 reporters are back in Kiev. What has become of the hopes of the protesters? Are the Ukrainians still fighting to join the European Union? This week, we revisit Maidan, Independence Square, in Kiev, Ukraine, for France 24.